In this video, I'm going to try something different. Instead of using an art movement, I am going to use an art medium as an art style. Um, the difference is uh, an art movement is basically a trend that happened over years where a bunch of artists um, started applying a same technique and, and defined a greater aspect of the art world where a medium is a tool like charcoal. Um, you can use charcoal in, in postmodern work. You, Da Vinci used it. It can be any anything. So it's a tool. It's it's even wider than using a um, art movement or a school. I should go over all these different terms. But anyway, I got some amazing results from this. You guys got to check it out because it is just sick. All right, let's get into it. Oh. oh, man. All right. This first one is cryptid taxidermy. If you're on Discord, you'll know I've just been going nuts with this. I absolutely love this. Um, I'm starting to work on a Halloween um, project right now, and this is going to be a big part of it. This cryptid taxidermy is it, its just phenomenal, the results that are coming out. They're dark. They're moody. They're gruesome and grotesque. I think grotesque is a great word for it. So cryptid taxidermy, what it is, is we know what the art form of taxidermy is. It's typically hunters um, are mounting their their kills. And uh, I, I know it's gruesome and people are going to have opinions. This isn't a political statement on it. It's taxidermy exists. It's an art form. So they stuff their, their trophies, put them on the wall and, you know, deer, zebra, whatever cryptid taxidermy is an art form where they're combining multiple characteristics of animals um to create a uh, a fantasy or a mythical beast if you grew up in the 80s you would have heard of the jackalope which uh the they were um these mounts you could buy of they were uh jackrabbits with deer antlers like and people I remember people like, oh, do these really exist? Is this a real thing? <laughs> it's kind of kind of weird. It time before the internet. But anyway, you could do all sorts of things. Like you could post mortem of a horse, mount its head, and put um, a horn from from a Norwal on it, and you'd be like, oh my god, a unicorn! That was a real unicorn. It's not. It's just the combination of of these. Uh, animals while they're being mounted and stuff in the taxidermy phase and combining it with other animals to create a, a uh, fantasy animal. So Mid Journey handles this amazingly. This is a woman in the style of cryptid taxidermy and I think it's just phenomenal. Like her hair has been replaced with this plume of feathers, um, this kind of skull-like bird beast thing on this this very uh, slight feminine body. I think it, it just did a phenomenal job. The mood, the tone, it's its just wild. like the background is just kind of deteriorated and decay. Uh, it's almost like a, just an old um, colonial decay type look. That's a woman. Here's a man. Of course, a man's a rat or rat type varmint. I don't know. But all right. There you go. Pretty cool. He's kind of cute in his old age. You know, I, in this one, I'm noticing uh, a journey is giving this this uh, fine detail. It's like high contrast, fine detail patterning that I hope they figure out a way to get rid of because it's very repetitive and and really says that this is a computer generated image. It's uh, it's bizarre. It's uh it, it's almost like there's too much detail in in places. I know they're trying to put a lot of detail in. I don't know the science behind this stuff, but especially in the highlight areas, you got to tone down that heavy noise pattern. It's just, it's a giveaway. Anyway, I'm only seeing it in a couple images. I see it in, in, in areas like this on his forehead, and I also see it in foliage and trees and stuff. But here's a guy, here's a man in the style of cryptid taxidermy. Cheeseburger. Oh my God. Straight out of uh, Cloudy with the Chance of Meatballs. Uh, I remember the the cheeseburger monster in the sequel, but this one's like 10 times gruesomer. Uh, I love it. It's got the antlers, you know, it's put the teeth. 
it uses all the elements of the burger in anatomical elements. Um, it's like the cheese is just drooling and, and the mouth, the, you know, the tomato is kind of tongue, tongue like, and, uh, you the, get this nice crease in the, in the bun. It's, and then these crab spider leg things with barbecue sauce. I don't know, but, uh, that's, that is disgust. A tree. Look at that. I am Groot. No, that is like an angry Groot. That is, uh, super cool. It, it looks like it could actually exist. And uh, it's blended so nicely with the head. Um, but what a cool element. I'm, I'm not sure what you would ever use this for, but man, is that giving us really awesome results and, you know, just makes me happy to, to see that that Midjourney can, can create images like this. An octopus. Seriously, Midjourney. <laughs> Nothing to the octopus. Midjourney right now is saying, you know what? Octopuses are weird enough. We don't need to add anything to them. It's just an octopus. So Mid Journey kind of like, it didn't do anything to the octopus. That just looks like a regular octopus to me. There is a little bit of metal work underneath here, and maybe that's signifying a taxidermy mount where how you would display it. But besides that, this looks like a regular octopus. Motorcycle. This is really neat. I, I love how there's mechanical details that have organic curves to them. And, you know, and you can... Some, some, uh, a, a customizer, you know, motorcycle customizer would, could probably make something like this, but beautiful work. And I love this organic detail coming out of the mechanical detail and how it's, it's just combining this. Even this cable here that wraps around has this nice organic horn to it, um, or antler, or whatever you would call it. Just beautiful stuff. Beautiful. I, I love it. Although these tires, I, might want a little bit more tread on him. Just saying. The forest. This guy's sad. He's a, he's our sad. This is a forest in the style of cryptid taxidermy. And my man is sad. He is upset about deforestation. And he, he's thinking about things. He's thinking about what am I going to do here? How am I going to stop this? This nonsense has gone on for long enough. Forest is fighting back. But... Now he, he's got a nice thoughtful gaze to him, but very cool how, you know, the moss and I don't know what kind of, it's like a furless elk or something. Um, that, but he's got roots on him and you know, his antlers, they're kind of antlery, they're kind of branchy, very cool how it's all combined. And you know, that's could be, you know, a mythical animal, you know, folk story about this. This guy roaming, roaming the woods. A house. Look at that. You know, it's really neat how, you know, the, you have the the raccoon skull on the roof, and it's built into this this cute little cottage that that has a very storybook aspect to it, fairy tale style. But what what gets me too is you have these branches that are in the an, anatomical locations of of like. Him reaching out, like really giving a, a a a feel to this model beyond just combining the two elements, it's it's giving this just this action, but it's frozen action. It's it's really neat how Mid Journey's handling this stuff. And I added one bonus one uh, to this because when I was running uh, the house command, I got one that was way you know these. What we've looked at so far have kind of they've been rendered in the almost a tenebrism style where there's the spotlighted subject and um, darker almost studio lighting uh, or setting. This next one came out of left field and uh, I I kind of had to just show you guys this guy. I mean look at this. It it threw a, it it took the the taxidermy the cryptid taxidermy. And it applied it in an illustration style, which just was completely shocking to me. This is the only one that came out like this. And I think it's phenomenal. I, I love these like con concaved uh, curves that are giving lines of action. You know, you, you have the mouth. I mean, this is like, it, it's Monster House, right? I, I'm just referencing all the animated films today. That was my history. That's where I used to work. But but look at this. This is, you know, you have this 
I really love this concave part of the porch over here. And then in contrast to that curve, you have this curve going the other direction of the tree. And, and then you have the, the face on top of it that also have these, these cool curves across the mouth and across the, the brow. And then more subtle curves up on the roof line where it kind of becomes the house again. But it's like these, these lines and everything are really suggesting that, that this beast, this evil within the house is just trying to get out. And, um, you know, that's, that's a great study if you're interested in doing traditional illustration. It's just looking at this and, and how Midjourney used these and to, to create this just beautiful illustration. And uh, I love this one. I mean, what a, I don't know where I'm going to use it, but I'm going to use it somewhere. And boy, oh, maybe, maybe that's my invitation for my Halloween party. That is pretty cool. All right. That is a house in encrypted taxidermy. And uh, what a great style. As I say, go check out the Discord because uh, I've gone nuts with this uh, in my command prompts. And I'm just, I'm blown away each time and I just love it. It really, it's a style that really talks to me. All right, this next one is pretty cool. And if you grew up in the 70s and 80s, like I did, uh, you'll remember this. This is pyrography, pyra, pyrog, pyrog, eh, py, pyro, pyrography, py, pyrography. So basically what it was, you were given a tool that was um, a lot like a soldering iron. It heated up it was super hot at the end and you can get different tips and stuff and you would take it onto a flat piece of wood and you could draw on it and it basically smoldered and burnt the wood and you basically were drawing on wood, but you were doing it in a burning way. I, I, this brings back such memories and I can almost... There's a very distinct, um, when you're creating this stuff, aroma, smell of burning wood and just smoldering wood as you're drawing. Um, I was never quite good at it, but it, it was kind of like a, something to mess around with. Um, but this is, uh, this is a woman in pyrography. I, I think that's how you say it. I <laughs> don't know. In fact, I, I don't even remember there being a technical term for it. I, I think it was, I want to say we just called it wood, wood burning art or wood burning, something along those lines. But anyway, here's a woman, beautiful. I mean, Mid Journey is really grabbing this and running with it. Here's a man in the same technique. And this is interesting because it's starting to also add a little bit of three dimensionality to it. And I was like, wow would be really interesting to see somebody uh, if somebody was really good with pyrography and wood sculpture if you could combine the two and start shading on top of uh wooden uh sculptures or or i i think what are what an effect and maybe people are doing that it's it's weird that you know looking at these in ai i was like oh i wonder if that's ever been done a burger look at how cool that is i mean you could totally see that it's Besides these big globs of nonsense, which I don't know what they are, but you could totally see this in like an old 1970s Burger King or something. I mean, how cool is it? Like painted over biography, a tree. Very cool. Um, again, it looks like it's extruded a little bit off of the back surface and then, and then detailed with this wood burning technique. So very cool. Looks awesome. And another, like you can see like, it's actually tracing the grain in some places to really sell that effect. But it's also embossed or extruded from the background piece of wood. Really interesting effect. And again, it's just amazing that, that the journey is thinking of this. And I'm sure people have done that, but I've never seen it. And now I'm like curious that, hey, I'm going to go grab a soldering iron and see what I can do. See how I can get creative. An octopus. Pretty straightforward octopus. Looks like it's burned onto wood, a very overexposed wood, but I mean, it's just, it looks cool. It's, it's just got the vibe to it. I love, I love exploring these styles within mid journey. Look at that, a motorcycle. I, this looks like a combination of a couple of things. There used to be another thing. I can't remember what 
the the technique was, but it was you would get these real thin wood laminates that had um, grain going in different ways and different types of wood, and you would glue them down so the grain was going in different directions and everything, create this more mosaic wood thing. Um, this obviously has the wood burning on top of it, but when I'm looking in, in um, the headlight and across the bumper, you can see how the, the, the wood grain is, is adhering or adding to the shape of the motorcycle and, and the gas tank. Very, very interesting stuff. Trees, this would be t something typical I would have found in 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 the 80s in 70s and 80s this would be an excellent example uh, of this technique i'm not gonna say it because i keep murdering that word for some reason i i don't know i must have a weird accent that is not allowing me to to say it house look at that that is just so cool i love this i really love it and it's interesting because it actually has a seam in the wood that goes from top to bottom, almost like two pieces of wood were joined together before they started this so piece. Piece, and I don't know if that's a good thing. It's, it's just adding this. This oh, that tree is awesome. It, it, it's just adding this level of I don't want to say detail, but it's imperfections that you wouldn't think that Mid Journey would be delving into. But this tree is awesome. I love this tree. I love this house. It's beautiful. I. I uh, just blown away by it. Is that it? That's it. All right. So that is pyrography. Pyrog pyrography. Next one. All right. The next version uh, or the le next medium is light painting. And this is a uh, right up my alley. This is a photography technique where you hold your, your um, shutter open for a while and then drag very bright lights, flashlights, sparklers, fire torches, anything that, that creates light uh, across the scene. So it actually draws lines with, with these bright, uh, illuminated, self-illuminated objects. Um, one of the cool uh, light painting techniques is holding the sh shutter open for a long time and then you light steel wool on fire and spin it really fast and it creates this this crazy sparking streaky um effect but anyway so this is a photography effect and our first one here is a woman uh in the style of light painting the other cool thing is while you're streaking and and running the stuff and uh with these lights in the background the person that is carrying it and whipping it around is moving so fast that they're not even being recorded on film because it's a long exposure and usually it's done so the ambient light is very low, very dark. Um, so the people, if they're moving quickly, they won't be recorded in the image. But our woman here who's up front, what she has to do is pay, stay perfectly still while the shutter's opening and you know something like this to do something like this would would take you know probably a good you know 10 15 seconds of of keeping it up keeping the shutter open and and then spiraling this fire in the back and she would have to stay perfectly still her hair is blowing here that wouldn't be possible that would be all blurred out so this is this image wouldn't be you wouldn't be able to create this in a real world circumstance but look at what mid journey does mid journey figures it out and does its magic so uh here is a woman in the style of light painting here's a man same thing he would be able to stay and hold that pose while somebody was spinning all this wild stuff in the back and uh but what a beautiful effect right i'm i'm sure you guys have seen light painting effects another thing is like when people take pictures of traffic car traffic at night hold the shutter open so you just get the tail lights or the headlights with these beautiful long lines that's another form of light painting a burger this is cool i mean this is like internal illumination plus light painting i mean you can totally use something like this you know for an ad campaign <laughs> i mean why not hey we're electrifying our burgers a tree light painting oh 
That's cool. Looks like, uh, you know, the sun's creeping through and lightning effect and lightning versus sunrise versus all this. The thing with light painting is anything that's moving is be going to become a blur because it's a long exposure. It's a long exposure technique. So I don't think a work like this could ever be created in real life, but boy, is it dramatic coming from uh, Mid Journey. An octopus. Octopus? Mid Journey just, it just wants to give you an octopus. I mean, this is bioilluminant, bioilluminated octopus, which I don't think those exist, but um, it's beautiful. I love it. Bioillumination. Bioillumination, that's when an animal can illuminate, like a firefly can self-illuminate. And I think there are fish that can do it. Pretty cool when it mixes it with an octopus, but I don't see this as light painting at all. Look at that, a motorcycle. You know, that's the streaks I was talking about. And, you know, you can give these really cool feelings of movement and speed with, with light painting. I love it. A forest. I mean, that almost looks like you could... Okay, first off, there's like three suns. But this almost looks like you're in a forest. It's really still. It's at dusk, sunset. You're going to do some light painting. And what's painting it is you hold your shutter open and you have the brightest fireflies on the face of the earth. Because it takes a lot of light to to uh, overcompensate for for this very dark imagery that you're doing because basically you're you're collecting light you're you're making your sensor not sensitive to the light uh so you're leaving it open so it can slowly build and it would take some mighty powerful lumens on those fireflies to create a an image like this look at that, that is a tree this is kind of kind of looks like it's not exactly, but it kind of looks like the steel wool technique I was telling you about. I mean, you wouldn't be able to do this. This looks like almost waterfalls coming off of the the uh, porch there and off of the roofing. But it's pretty cool because, like, when you're doing that that uh, steel wool effect in film and you're spinning it and the sparks are flying off, you if it's hitting a surface like down here along the edge it builds up the light builds up and will create like a a, um, a core it's a really cool effect if you're interested in photography i would i would definitely go out and, and try this stuff and uh, the neat thing too that mid journey gets right is these are long exposures so it's giving you long exposure clouds you can see that they're blurred that the the cloud movement is blurred up there and it's more blurred closer to you than it is further away and it's very interesting that that mid journey can knows the 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 subtleties of of this technique um so yeah there's light painting all right our next um medium that we're going to use as an art style is smoke art i mean this is really cool this is another photography technique a lot of times it's uh long exposure but uh, it, it's basically photographing smoke and painting with smoke um, while your shutter's open and creating these just wild effects. Now, Mid Journey takes it to a whole new level. As you can see, a woman in the style of smoke art, it has blended the smoke with her hair. It's almost as if her hair is made out of smoke, and that is just such a beautiful application of this. Uh, you know, something you you couldn't really do without post-processing techniques. So here is a woman in the style of smoke art. Let me make sure I'm clicking in here. I always forget. Here's a man in the style of smoke. Could, I mean, first off, this looks like that could be a young Freddie Mercury in smoke, but it's also lit uh, like their their album cover. Uh, it, it's got a lot of Freddie Mercury vibes in this one, but uh, smoke art. And uh, as as a guy, again, the smoke is intertwining with his hair and giving this really cool atmospheric look to it. A burger. Look at that. That's pretty cool. I mean, you want steam coming off your burger to give it the essence of, of heat and everything like that. And uh, it just makes it really dramatic um, for food photography. So throwing in some smoke art. You know, if I were to rerun this in mid-journey, I'd probably zoom out so that we got the tops of the smoke.
but look at that that would that's perfect i i don't know what these bits of food are it's like rice krispies that's the only thing that's a little off here but you know if you were going to use this in a campaign or something you clean that up with uh photoshop's generator gener generator generative god i am i need more coffee generator generative fill a tree now that is cool this is this is a little illustrative but it's also got the essence of the smoke art and how it builds and the long exposure and you know you find that uh with smoke art you get these really like the edges are are, are more dense than the interiors i don't know what the physics of i'm sure if i thought about it i'd figure it out but it has to do with how long that line is during the whole exposure of the photograph but very cool i like that that is that is a cool piece and a cool color palette too it's very cool motorcycle look at how cool that is i mean i don't know if i want that much smoke coming off my motorcycle but for dramatics and theatrics this nah, that's pretty cool the octopus this is creepy i mean this has got the octopus coming out of the smoke and like his tentacles and everything. And there's way too, too, too many tentacles for one octopus. And some of them are disconnected and it's concerning. Looking at that image, it's concerning. But yeah, there's the octopus in smoke art. Forest, come on. I mean, that's perfect. I, this is a great example of atmospheric perspective using the smoke. You know, everything up. Up front is more vibrant. Uh, it's got more saturation, more color. And then as you go deeper into the fog smoke, it's it, it loses its coloring. It gets desaturated, less contrasty. Uh, so, yeah, smoke art lo works really good with the forest scene here. And it's interesting because this doesn't look like fog. It looks like smoke. And it's interesting that, that Midjourney can differentiate the two. You know, this is this is stringier um, than what fog would be. Fog is typically more billowy. So this 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 is I would use this on like a for like a forest fire prevention ad campaign. This would be a, a a good image. And I know up in Canada they've been having a lot of wildfires and stuff, but I'm not trying to be insensitive to that. It's just saying if I was doing an ad campaign to prevent people from smoking or or having fires when they're not supposed to have fires and this would be a good um this could be a powerful image for that house look at that this reminds me of just you know 1980s practical effects in movies like if there was a horror movie and something ominous was about to happen and doesn't have to be the fog. It can be like, you know, this is the vampire's house. And, you know, they, they wanted to just... Something's being awakened. And I could see an effect like this being used on a miniature where you just put this big billowy smoke over the house. And, you know, that that gives the viewer, the audience, um, the feel that, that a change is happening. Evil has happened. And I think that looks beautiful. That <laughs> looks so cool. And Mid Journey is rendering smoke beautifully. And it's giving me very different kinds. I mean, this is a very thick, opaque smoke where the 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 forest back here was thin and and stringy. What's the word for stringy? I don't remember. But the house, beautiful. It's almost like on a cloud. It's stunning. All right. That is smoke art. It's a medium that you should try as a, as a style in inside of Mid Journey. Does a great job. All right, here is another one, um, very popular in the 70s and 80s. This is spirograph art. So, I was surprised when I did a little research. I remember having the spirographs when I was a kid, and they were like these plastic gears and. You would have an exterior gear and an interior gear and places for your pen and you would trace it and, and spin. The, the pencil would go inside of it. You should really look it up online because I'm not describing this well at all. The pencil would go inside the internal gear and then you you basically let the the internal gear rotate uh, against the external gear 
and the pen would create these these intricate circles, uh, interlocking circles and and um, patterns, ge- geometric patterns that were beautiful to look at. But uh, so this was marketed as a toy. So I did a little research, and I I really thought spirographs were going to be something that was you know 50s, 60s. 70s 80s like that was the creation these things actually go all the way back to the early 1900s and were uh advertised in in old uh sears catalogs as as toys um which really surprised me so this is a woman in the style of a spirograph here's a man in the style of a spirograph i mean this is this is stunning it's you know it's got the the intricacies and the the, the smaller circles, the larger circles, and the patterning that it all works together. Like, what amazes me is Midjourney knows that this should be symmetrical in a way, and it can maintain it. Um, like, it, it, it's as if Midjourney knows what's going on over here on the left side of the picture is what needs to go on on the right side of the picture. I need some coffee. I am just, so that's a man in the style of a spirograph art. It is weird. You look at his skull and it's starting to, these lines are are embedding into under his skin. It's kind of creepy. A burger. I mean, look at that. That is so cool. It's very reminiscent. It, it's spirograph, but it also has this feel of, of, of polygonal art of, um, you know, like a polygon, uh, three-dimensional art cage, a uh, model cage. Um, something you would see in Tron or something. The uh, wireframe is the word I'm looking for, but it's a wireframe that makes up tomatoes and and these these must be onion rings up here. Very cool. I I it's definitely got the vibe of the spirograph, but it applies it in a three dimensional form, which spirographs are very two dimensional. So it's it's a weird mix mix and match a tree look at that that is so cool that's what i think of when i think of spirograph art too is like you know you because around the edges and everything you you see this this cross hatching a convex and concave cross hatching and then you know a more distinct pattern towards the center but what a look that is that is something it's like a mix between dr seuss and tim burton motorcycle this is interesting. I mean, it, it, it's less about the spirograph. I mean, it essence is spirograph, but it has this feeling of of just wireframe containers. It's it's interesting. I I will give it that. Definitely know it's a motorcycle. Octopus. <laughs> See now the octopus is getting weird. Yeah, you know, some things it's like the octopus. Like Midjourney doesn't know how to apply the. And that's why I use it as a an example is Mid, Midjourney doesn't know how to apply a look like the cryptic taxidermy. Like it just knows it's an octopus and an octopus is weird. But when you put it into Spirograph, you know, oh, those tentacles just get, they're going everywhere. We're using them. We are using them. I would not want to meet up with this thing. I would not want it as decoration in my house. Nope. Uh-uh. Got, and I like octopuses. A forest. Now, this is less spirograph there's a couple essences like down in the bottom where i can kind of see spirograph but i would say this is more fractal art i'm really feeling the fractal sense of this and i'm not a mathematician but i can throw around those words but this is definitely more fractal than spirograph but it's beautiful I and I kept it because I do see some spirograph elements down here and it's being used in a unique way. So it doesn't always have to be obvious. It's you know, I throw these styles out there because you can stumble upon cool stuff and I love in this image I really love the way the ground is rendered and how it it has these uh curves that pull up to the trees and each tree has this this really neat dual curve where it pinnacles right at the trunk and I find that pretty amazing that that midjourney is like yeah we're doing that and a house now this is typical spirograph and you know what is really amazing me with this 
is like traditional architecture, the house doesn't have to be completely symmetrical. But it Mid Journey seems to know that the spirograph background does need to be symmetrical or should be symmetrical. Symmetrical. And it's interesting again that it knows like what's happening on the right should happen on the left. This is a really interesting concept of, you know, it's it's obviously uh, rendering out a three-dimensional house out of flat paper, but the modeling of the house can be 3D, but it knows that the spirograph should be two-dimensional because that's kind of where we see it. It's just a really interesting blend. I don't know where I would use this, how I would use something like this, but making your, you know... Seeing it and, and imprinting on it, you know that it's, you, you never know when you're going to pull that out down the road. And I think it's a, a beautiful image. I don't know what to do with it, but uh, it it is absolutely beautiful. All right. And that is Spirograph, the Spirograph medium as an art style. All right. Thank you for taking this journey with me and exploring art mediums as art styles. It's pretty cool i mean i love the way um you know just the the mental exercise of seeing um mid journey execute what we're throwing at it and um you know where it validates a a style or a medium or a movement and where it throws it away and how it interprets it it's like you know that's part of what art is 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 interpretation and sitting there and you know, Midjourney's interpreting things in different ways, and I think looking at that and it's it's unique ways, and I think that is a really good exercise for creativity is to see, you know, that's why we go look at other artists is because we want to see how they interpret it and then open our minds up to not necessarily the exact idea of interpreting that way, but the idea of opening our minds to see other other options. Um, so this was uh, fantastic. I think uh, using art mediums as art styles is great. I'm going to explore more. I'm going to find more. And I'm telling you, cryptid, cryptid taxidermy, uh, I'm already planning um, a big Halloween project, and that is going to play a huge role. I just... I am blown away with how cool that is. And, and go check out the Discord because I've been slamming the Discord with images um, that weren't included in this um, video for cryptid, cryptid, I am, I just have not had enough coffee. Cryptid taxidermy. Anyway, go check it out. Also, if you could like this video, that would be awesome. Subscribe to the channel and comment below. Let's talk about this stuff. What kind of weird stuff are you doing? Have you guys found anything that is just off the wall? I want to hear about it. All right. Till next time.